very possible that we're in need of a much greater deliverance than what we're aware of. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10 Minute Torah and day number one of special Pesach Passover readings as we enjoy the week of Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread or Hag Matzot. Today we're going into the book of Shemot, going backwards a little bit from our current study. And we're going to be looking in chapter number 12 for the next several days. Today, verses 21 through 24. Verse 21 says, And Moshe called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go out and take lambs for yourselves according to your clans and slay the Pesach. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. Yahweh shall pass on to smite the Mitzrites, and shall see the blood on the lintel and the two doorposts. Yahweh shall pass over the door, and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. You shall guard this word as a law for you and your sons forever. When we think of Passover, Pesach is the Hebrew term, uh, often we think about getting dressed up and going to a Seder, Seder meal and presentation. For some, it would be suits and ties and, and uh, upgraded dress for the ladies. Others, it's inviting people to your home and having uh, special dinner plates set out, preparing lamb, other food dishes, and spending time reading through the Remembrance Meal Seder presentation. Um, others are spending their time arguing about the difference between Passover and Easter, uh, somewhat a fruitless endeavor. Those who are given to Easter are given to it, and those who are given to Passover are given to that. It's not likely that your verbal bombs on Facebook or other social media is going to change anyone's mind. All that set aside, then, what is Passover? What is Pesach really about? At the root of this meal of remembrance is the need to remember that Yah said to Pharaoh through Moshe, let my people go that they may serve me. What Yah is trying to accomplish, even to this day, is a, a means of freeing our minds and our beings to a place to where we rightly, appropriately, and scripturally worship him, serving him. This is not just about attending a gathering once or twice a week. This is not just about feast days, and they're vitally important, so we keep them. This is not just about keeping commands of the Torah. They're vitally important, and we need to keep them. This is about linking our beings back with the Creator who gave us life and living in such a manner and in such a way that we honor Him daily. And our speech, and our relationships, and the conduction of our uh, our affairs financially, uh, relationally, in our communities, we need to be sources of His light to those who are still in darkness. So, Pesach is actually then about deliverance, being set free from whatever it is whoever it is that is limiting us from serving him as he desires to be served. So deliverance at its root means being set free. Uh, we partake of this meal, and the, the word here is that we're to do it with our loins girded. They were to observe this meal, shoes on their feet, staff in their hand, Loins girded up, ready to be set free. How, how, how do I put this? Going through a, 
a Seder presentation, and we will be doing that this week. Eating the food, reading through the text, sharing the remembrance, but not anticipating being liberated and freed in the process in some respects means that we've only gone through a ritual that we do every year without the expectation, the anticipation that applying the message of Pesach is going to liberate and free us, then we're still just eating a meal in our bondage. Israel, on this particular night, ate this food as they were instructed, with blood staining their doorposts and lentils, understanding we're not here in fear, we're here in anticipation. Think about that. Do we eat this meal out of fear? Well, he will, Yah will do something terrible to us if we don't do it. Or... Uh, we're afraid of what someone else will think if we're not a part of the presentation of the, of the meal. Fear of what the world is going to do and, and how the world is going to turn and what governments and, and uh, groups and, and those that we agree or disagree with, what they're going to do. All of the fear mongering in the earth, leave that outside. We eat this meal on the inside in anticipation that we're about to be set free at expectation and an anticipation of deliverance. There's no other place more necessary to be freed than in our minds and in our inward understandings. Uh, I mentioned having our loins girded in First Kiva, First Peter chapter number one. Verse 13 says, Therefore, having girded up the loins of your mind, be sober and set your expectation perfectly on the favor that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Yeshua Messiah. <laughs> Our expectation is that Mashiach, Yeshua, the Messiah, is coming, returning, and bringing his kingdom. We live in a sober mindful way, we are aware of what we're doing. We're not wandering mindlessly through our, our lives. We're living on purpose. Uh, I learned many years ago, you either live by design or by default. Default meaning we just fall back to whatever the flesh or the inclinations of our, our lower selves would determine. If we want to live above that, then we need to design our lives according to the word and purposefully live our life, not by accident, but on purpose. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you prove what is that good and well-pleasing and perfect desire of Elohim. Again, the mind left to its own devices can be a dangerous thing. Allowing your thought life, allowing your meditations, allowing what you see, hear, and understand and perceive to come in without the filter of the word and the guard of the Ruach of Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, is a dangerous choice of the way to live. So partaking in Pesach should be a great reset for us. That's a term that the political world is throwing around and actually misusing. A proper reset is to allow the Ruach of Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, to regenerate, recreate, refurbish, renew, uh, restore right thinking and right perception into our, our beings so that we view world events and things that's going on in life around us with an understanding, these are the things I need to be delivered from. And how great is the need of our deliverance? But then again, how great is our deliverer? I think on that thing.
And we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, shalom. 